Hey there, my name is Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. Now, the Raspberry Pi 4 is a fantastic single board computer. However, it isn't your only solution when it comes to wanting to learn more about programming, or about uh, robotics, or about home automation, or about just generally using hardware and software together. There are alternatives. And today, what I want to do is look at the alternative of buying a secondhand PC rather than buying a Raspberry Pi 4. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now the retail price for a Raspberry Pi 4 with eight gigabytes of RAM is $75. Now if you find yourself in the situation where you can't get hold of one, or in fact the prices are going up because of their scarcity, then actually $75 is a pretty good budget. We could eke that out to maybe $100, that you can get yourself a second-hand PC along with a microcontroller like a Raspberry Pi Pico, or an Arduino, and there doesn't seem to be any problem in getting those, even an ESP32 based board. And now you have the combination of a PC and a microcontroller, and you can basically do everything that you can do on a Raspberry Pi 4. So what I've done is I've actually gone out and set myself a budget of under $100, and I've gone out to buy a second-hand PC, I've got, and a microcontroller, and to see whether I can put together a kit for the same price or a similar price as a Raspberry Pi 4, or in fact maybe even cheaper if the prices are actually a bit higher in your area. Now what's not included in my budget setup is a monitor, because obviously you don't get a monitor with a Raspberry Pi 4, keyboard, mouse, or any of the cables. They would all be extras that you'd need to buy or you already have at your home if you were buying a Raspberry Pi 4. So we're going to apply the same rules to this PC setup. So the first thing you need to do is go online and look for a second-hand PC. And I went online, looked at all the popular sites in my area for people who are selling PCs, sometimes companies who are selling PCs, and I managed to get myself a Siemens Fujitsu PC for $64. And that's got a second-generation i5 processor in it, it's got 8 gigabytes of RAM and a 500 gigabyte hard drive. So $64 and I've got myself a PC setup. Now you of course could just use that if it's a working setup that you've bought, then that's it, you're away. You've got your, C your PC, you put in uh, your, t your monitor and your mouse and your keyboard, you can connect up your microcontroller, you can use something like MicroPython, and now you can do everything. You can learn Python, you can learn C, you can learn Rust, you can learn C Sharp, you can do stuff with the microcontroller, you can control robotics and motors and temperature sensors, that's it. You can do all the same stuff as you could on a Raspberry Pi 4, and in fact, it's come in cheaper. However, there would be one upgrade that I would strongly recommend, and that is get rid of this and replace it with this. So this is the hard drive. So this is a three and a half inch hard drive that came inside of the PC, and while it works, it will slow things down. So instead today, of course, we mainly use SSD. So this is a Kingston 240 gigabyte SSD and it cost me just $18. So an $18 upgrade is gonna give you a whole bunch of improvements in terms of speed. And the way you do the upgrade is fairly simple. You need to pop open the case. Each case is of course different. There'll be some screws or a latch. You pop it open, you find that hard drive. It'll have two cables in the back of it. One will be for power and one will be for the data. You unplug the cables, you take out the hard drive. Again, that may have some kind of mounting mechanism with screws or even just some a tray that pops out as it is in my case. And then you just physically replace one drive with the other, and then you connect up the cables and pop it back in again. Now, form factor is one thing, of course, because that's a three and a half inch drive. The Kingston, the SSD are generally two and a half inch drives. Now, there are two ways around this. It actually turns out that I had in this PC a mounting kit that converted two and a half, three and a half to two and a half. So it was very easy just to replace it. If you don't have a mounting kit, don't bother spending money on it. You can actually just mount it by screwing in two of the four screws on one side. And actually I've had that in lots and lots of PCs. Now all the professional PC makers will pull out their hair at this point and say, no, you can't do that, that's terrible. And yes, I suppose from you know a professional point of view, but if you want it just to work, you just screw them in. They're so light, these SSDs, they will just hang there. And I've had them in some PCs for three, four years. It's never any problem, it's just a fixing way of fixing it. If you want to prop it up with a bit of polystyrene or something like that, you can do that as well. It's not really necessary. But the point is you need to get that two and a half inch drive in there. You plug in exactly the same cables and that's it. You've upgraded the hardware. 
But once you've upgraded the hardware, now you're gonna to need to reinstall the operating system. Now at this point, you have two options. One is you could go with Linux, so you can get yourself one of the popular Linux distributions, Ubuntu, for example, uh, Mint. There's lots of them, and lots of people will argue about you know which one you should be using. You could do a bit of research if you wanted to, but stick with something popular because at least there's gonna be a big community behind it, which might be able to help you answer some of your questions. Now that's great. Now here's the thing I'm gonna say, maybe a bit controversial for some people. If you're learning a new thing, so for example, if you're new to microcontrollers, you're new to GPA or general purpose in power, but you're new to stepper motors, you're new to temperature sensors, you're new to this whole thing, then my advice as you know, from a learning point of view is don't make yourself have to learn two new things at once. So if you put in Linux, and you're trying to learn microcontroller. Now you've got two things done. You've got to learn how to use Linux. You've got to understand how all that works. And then you've got to understand how the microcontroller works. So your learning curve is steeper. Now, if you're already familiar with Windows, here's the controversial thing. You might want to just keep Windows on your PC or install Windows on it again. And you can use the Raspberry Pi Pico, the Arduino, all from Windows. It's definitely not a problem in any way whatsoever. It all works. And of course, all the compilers are available for Windows as well. You've got C Sharp and C and Java and Python and Rust, and it's all there. And of course, you've also got Windows subsystem for Linux. And I've got videos about that here on this channel if you're not familiar with it, which will give you basically a, uh, a Linux command prompt on your Windows desktop. And in fact, I was able to use and program a Raspberry Pi Pico from within inside Windows subsystem for Linux on Windows. Windows, using it like I was using a Linux machine, but in fact, actually, I was using Windows. So in that sense, you get the best of both worlds. Now, I agree that's a controversial opinion, and that's absolutely fine if you don't agree with me. But again, my main point is here, if you want to learn something new, if you want to get into GPIO, microcontrollers, temperature sensors, all that stuff, as I said, don't make this job harder for yourself by giving yourself two things to do, two things to learn. That will make life more difficult and ultimately may mean you fail at your end goal, which means you've actually not achieved what you wanted to do. Now, installing Windows 10 is very easy. You just need to go to Microsoft's website. They have a media installation a tool, which basically you download it, you plug in a flash drive and it will just copy Windows onto that flash drive. You pop the flash drive into the PC, power it on, make sure you access the boot menu, maybe F11, F12 when you first start it up, will allow you to pick where it boots from, pick that it boots from that USB drive and then just go through the Windows uh, installation, pretty simple. Now, if you need any Microsoft software license keys for the software you're putting on this new PC of yours, then a good place to go is Software Keep. I'd like to thank them for sponsoring this video. Now, Software Keep is a certified Microsoft partner and they sell only genuine Microsoft software and that's backed up by 365 24 by 7 customer support where you'll speak to real people, not to robots. If you take a look at the review stats from popular places like Google Reviews and from Trustpilot and so on, you can see they have some very, very good ratings here and many, many customers have rated them five star. Now, what do they offer? They offer lifetime and subscription based Microsoft products. That's Microsoft Office, Microsoft 365, Windows itself, antivirus software and so on. Some of the best selling products are Office 2021, uh, Windows 10 and Windows 11. You pay online using PayPal, a credit card or a debit card, and you normally get your key within 30 minutes. Now, I do recommend you head over to their website and you use my coupon code, which will be displayed here on the screen and it's in the description below, which will give you 20% discount. Now, some of the differences in Software Keep and Microsoft, for example, are that Software Keep's prices are generally about 25% lower than the Microsoft's RRP. And also Software Keep offer you year round lifetime protection on all your purchases. Now, I wanted to make sure this service was also genuine. So I got hold of a key from Software Keep and I have installed it and activated it and it works absolutely perfectly. Now, one other thing to mention about Windows 10 is that technically it's not supported on any processors, for example, lower than an i3 or an i5 third generation. Now, I've bought a second generation. I'll tell you, I've even installed it on even older chips. That Windows 10 will work fine on those processors. However, what you may find is if it has any inbuilt graphics, so it's got an Intel GPU in it, or if you're using an AMD chip and you're putting it on an older AMD chip and it's got the AMD uh, Radeon inside of it, you may not find the drivers for it. And I've actually had this situation where the driver that came up was just the generic Microsoft one, which was limited in its resolution, and maybe it doesn't have hardware acceleration for decompression 
decoding video, let's say from a YouTube video. So in that case, what you're gonna to need to do is stick in a cheap uh, graphics card. Now, as I say, if you buy an i3 or an i5 third generation or above, then you should be okay and all the drivers should come with it. Now again, what I did is I went online and I found an older GF 210, 210, so it's a GeForce 210 from NVIDIA, you can pick them up for about $10, just depending on exactly which one you get. And I put one of those in the PC, and then I was able to install NVIDIA's drivers, and it works absolutely fine, completely supports. I've got Windows 10, I've got an NVIDIA graphics card, and I've got an older processor, but it all works fine, and I can run multiple monitors, I've got hardware uh, acceleration. So you may have to include that as an extra upgrade, 10 to $20 to put on your budget depending exactly on what you buy. Now if you find a bargain when you buy the actual PC, eight gigabytes of RAM and a newer processor, or already has integrated graphic has a graphic dedicated graphics inside of it, then that's absolutely great. So it really does depend on what you buy that first time around. In fact, I did find a PC when I was buying this one that had a better processor. It had an SSD in it and it had better graphics and it was still under my budget, but I thought no I'm gonna go down the path of actually doing the upgrade. So I help you out if you need to do that. And that's it, now you've got a Windows machine up and running, you've got fast storage, you've got good graphics, you've got eight gigabytes of RAM, you've got Windows running on it, and now you just connect up your microcontroller. And I've got plenty of videos here on this channel about Arduino, about the Raspberry Pi Pico, how to set them up. The simplest thing would be to get a Raspberry Pi Pico, even a Pico W, so you get wireless uh, connectivity. Use something like MicroPython using the Thony ID, E-T-H-O-N-N-Y, Thony IDE, and you'll be up and running making LEDs flash, reading temperature sensors in absolutely no time at all. And we've done all this in a very similar budget than what you could do to buy a Raspberry Pi 4 or even less if the prices are high or the availability is low uh, in your area. And just a quick reminder, don't forget you can get 20% off software bought at Software Keep using the coupon code in the description. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video, an alternative to the Raspberry Pi 4, a Windows PC with a microcontroller will do just about everything that you need. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these types of videos, then I invite you, please join the community by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.